Okay. Rolling. Okay, hold on. St- calm down. The show's starting. Hey, <laughs> welcome to episode two of Incompatible with Cat and Michael. Um, we're going to start the show as we always do with the whiskey tasting. But before we do the whiskey tasting, why don't we talk about some of the feedback we got from week one just to catch up? <laughs> so uh, one guy wrote to say, Ugh. I think the whole world is tired of guys that look like that. Why don't you tell him to fuck right off into a jet cover band in the Midwest somewhere? Michael, so, Michael. Hold Michael that, I'm Mike saying Mike hi no. to my fan base. I'm, saying <laughs> hi. I'm trying to. I know, but I have. I no, have, I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. Could you just fuck right off and go to the Midwest and join a. Co- you don't. She doesn't even know what a jet cover band is. No. She doesn't remember jet. God bless her. Um. And then another guy wrote to Kat and he started uh, his, he wanted to be friends with her and he started off by saying, hi Kat, I just listened to your podcast with Michael, parentheses, who's the lamest, uh, <laughs> and I noticed you're from Oklahoma, exclamation Omaha. point, Omaha, whatever, same thing. No, it's yes, not. Yes, it is. Oh it's Nowheresville that no one cares about. You know what? <laughs> this is why okay. Trump won. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm I'm why Trump won. Um, true. Okay, whiskey tasting. Yeah, we're ready for it? Sure, okay. okay. Well, so, uh, why don't you do the, you Gentlemen, know. I uh, have just come from the presence of greatness. So, it just so happens that the man in the whiskey industry is a woman. And her name is Rachel Berry. And she presented, um, not this exact bottle, but many from the Ben Riek um, distillery and she's I was moved to tears I was moved to tears hearing her tasting notes and I have to brag you know because we didn't know what we were tasting first we we didn't know what we were nosing and tasting and I wrote down nosing I'm going to need an explanation of that when you're done you just nosing is just when you sniff it you, oh, you okay. put your snout right into it mm-hmm. um, we today t- today we're drinking from communion cups just because they're easy here love bug let me pour you in um but so this woman rachel berry is just so remarkable and she uh was going through the expressions with us and i was nosing it and tasting it and i wrote down pear brandy and then she went through what she tasted and then she said open it up with a little bit of water and then she's like oh and that's when the pear really comes out and there was another word that they used for it was a type of brandy and she was just like yeah a pear brandy and i said to the gentleman next to me i'm like look i literally wrote down pear brandy and he's like you've been validated and i feel so validated in my heart because picking things as specific as pear brandy out of a i mean it, it was a really good day so uh cheers uh, cheers and can i just Skull point out real salud. quick that nosing is also what i call my patented version of oral sex on a woman so <laughs> <laughs> what must that be like being a zero boy? Wow. return customers <laughs> um whoa ooh. was that intense no tell me tell me, tell actually, me your thoughts tell me all your okay. thoughts because because we we have a wincer nosing your your Did, eyes got a little oh, that's, watery uh, we should forgot yeah. to mention that's cat augustin i am mike rogelio super producer travis Clyburn. hey um so travis your your eyes started to water you sputtered a little bit totally normal reaction nothing to be embarrassed about um i very much like this okay I very much like this. Yeah, I don't hit it in any way, shape, or form. I think yeah. it's nice. It, it's, uh, it doesn't have as much of a harsh kind of like afterburn yeah. as uh, Last maybe week. the other one. Yeah. Last week was a little of the old, whoa, this stuff's for real. Well, it This one reminds me a little more of one of my favorites, and I know this is lowbrow, but Maker's Mark, which I like very much. I know. Sorry. No, whiskey fine. snobs. No, no, no. It's fine. <laughs> um, it's fine. There, do, you know, do you know a woman designed uh, the whole... <sighs> Uh, aesthetic of the red wax on Maker's Mark. That was a woman. Oh, yep. Hey. As well. Okay, so I'm I'm wrong. So this was selected for me by Ryan January, 
the uh, spirits buyer at Wally's. I mean, real rock star he is. And Wally World. Yeah, yeah. And he. Um, and so this is. So we did taste this. This is the Ben Riek single malt, uh, the cask strength batch to uh, sixty point six ABV. So that's that's why you're sputtering and wincing because it's it's higher alcohol oh. content. And, he, and singing my song. He said he said the <laughs> smartest thing where. I, I never realized this. If if you take it with a little bit of water, as mm-hmm. you should, when it's this high proof, oh, I didn't know that. It's like you get two bottles oh. out of the thing. Ah. here's a quick question for you before we head into the meat of the show. Um, does it ever happen that, like mm. you said, you're a single malt, malt master? That's your title now. No, mm. you're not. Yes, you are single malt specialist, Scotch master. Yeah. Oh yeah, Scotch master. Okay. Yeah. Scotch uh, master. Is there a lot of alcoholism in that trade? Do people? Or, I mean, are you guys all so refined that you keep it to mm-hmm. sipping and nobody ever pounds this stuff? Yeah, you can't, you can't, I, I mean, I don't, who, because some, you know, you can disguise alcoholism. I don't know. I've never spotted it, you know. Yeah. And uh, I can definitely spot an alcoholic. I run open mics. So I, I yeah. spot alcoholism yeah. on a yeah. regular basis. You know. Yeah, but uh, that's, a, I mean, that's a, that's a really valid question. You certainly don't get to where some of these rock stars in the industry are like Rachel Berry and Martin DeRoz and you know uh, Rick Edwards and you you don't get their name drop yeah. uh, did you say Rick Edwards yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry Rick I'm I apologize Apple I'm, I'm of my eye. Oh, okay and can you pour Iowa. me some more Ben Riak um Yes. Temple so, Ben React. So, but, but, um, the thing is, is that like at a tasting like I was just at, it's, Travis it's, too. Y- y- you, first of all, you'd embarrass yourself if you were visibly drunk, right? right? And also, you, it's this, it's this thing of where like, you, you want to be as clear as you possibly can so you can download all the information given to you. So, because I'm like taking massive amounts of notes about like, you know 1889 and then uh, but also it's so delicious that you want to get every last drop and note so it it like for me because i am a lightweight like i just have a rule like after scotch events my boyfriend picks me up and we go have ramen Mm because i can't hang after hours after hours is where i would get into a lot of trouble (laughs) you know um but uh uh i i it's it's hard to tell people that do have problems with alcohol that you work in alcohol and you don't have a problem like it's 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 hard to tell some people like I can actually just have one and enjoy myself and you know it like I've I've had a friend where I'm just like I'm I know you think I drink a lot but unlike you I've never been kicked out of a bar I've never gotten a DUI I've never hit oh someone God, don't dr- get me started. never hit someone when I was drunk never gotten a terrible screaming don't fight with my boyfriend get me like started yeah. on alcoholic ex girlfriends yeah, okay it's, it's a weird, well no it's too late it's you a weird thing to say like oh yeah I don't God. have a yeah. I don't have a problem I remember I was dating this girl oh my God God, did we have a good time the first two months we were dating. <laughs> Holy guacamole. I was like, this girl likes to party. Oh, my God. I love it. Finally, somebody who gets me. And uh, and then it started to get a little weird. It was like, oh, whoa, you are like, I remember I bought a bottle of like some fancy booze she wanted to get one night. And I brought over her house. And we had some drinks. And then, you know, we watched a movie and went to bed or whatever. And then I came over the next night. I was like, yeah, let's say, hey, let's pop that bottle open and have some. She's like, that's gone. I'm like, Whoa, what? Yeah, alone? She's like, that's gone. Yeah, gone. And then like, By yourself? yeah, the whole thing came to a head one night when I was like, OK, hey, tell you what. I could tell something was going on. I was like, we are going to stay in and play board games tonight. No booze. Just drink some green tea. Is that two months into it? Yeah, it was about two, three months into it. And uh, so we're playing Connect Four. That was the game we ended up uh, deciding so on. So boring. And she says, and I, we could hear the neighbors having a party, like a few doors over. And she says, uh, I have to go walk the dog. Half an hour later, I'm like, okay, that's a hell of a long walk for the friggin' dog. So I go outside. I, 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 I had an inkling of where to go. So I go to the party. As I'm going in, this guy's like, who is that fucking crazy bitch? I'm like, <laughs> okay, yep. 
I thought so. And I go in and she just punched some girl. Everyone's like, who are you? What are you even doing here? I'm like, okay, that, we are going, we're going back to play Connect Four. That's I like cute. drag her and I'm like, that is insane. What are you doing? That was crazy. That was crazy. She's like, you don't understand. You don't get it, of course, belligerent drunk. So we play like exactly three more checkers worth of Connect Four. What are She's you like, talking? You still I have, played Connect yeah, Four? Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to I'm someone? trying to connect. I'm trying to get her this like off focus. Hey, it's you, not preposterous. That you even collected her. Anyway, after she says she has to go that. to the bathroom and uh gone again. And I fucking her. And I walk outside and there she is in the front porch. She's like, let me the fuck back in there again. We don't even know you. This is like a birthday party. You're not <laughs> invited. And when uh, was yeah. this? What year? What year was this? I don't know. 2009. I Okay. First, can you believe he even Ten. collected her? Yeah. Like, I can't believe no, you just I was didn't gonna spin gonna on your heel and be like, well, and I'm never calling you again, weirdo. But like, you went in like, no, no, she's with me. No, come on. We're going to keep playing Connect Four. No, no, no. Like, I felt what? obligated just as a decent person That's to sweet. not let her wreck this freaking party, man. Okay. And we only dated for like two months after that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> too long. And she, by the way, uh, well, she did. So she was already going to AAA, <laughs> AAA, double <laughs> A. I don't. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't know what the hell your organization's called. My higher power is right here. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. And I, I always told people, I was like, oh my god, she was a nightmare as a drunk, and she was the worst person I ever met when she was sober. It was insane. I remember I was playing a rock show, and uh, she was like. I'm coming to your show tonight, and I, and you're not allowed to drink. I was like, I definitely am. It's my show, and I want to have a drink. Well, no, no, no. Okay, and then she made a deal with me. She's like, you can have one drink one hour before your show, and then you have to go eat an entire box of Altoids so I can't smell it on your breath. And I was like, okay, or I can break up with you. These are the options. Wow. I went with option B. Yeah. And no, come on. I, I'm sympathetic to the plate of the alcoholics. But, you know, I mean, ultimately, if we, whatever. It I'm is ultimately something you have to go through. And as a, a, a newbie boyfriend, I don't know that I was all that obligated. Plus, I'm probably an alcoholic myself. So. I'm going to go out on a limb here and mm. say, and this is controversial, and a lot of my friends have jumped down my throat for saying this, because mm -hmm. um, I am an empathetic person. Person for, but I, I have noticed that a lot of the people in the program that won't shut up about the program have some textbook like toxic narcissistic traits where it's just like they never ask about me, they never see how I'm doing. I'm, you know, there for them all the time. Um, you know, they would, they never think to check in or, you know, like pause and be like, how are you? You know, and if mm. I do happen to mention what's going on with me, they just kind of like look in the distance and their eyes glaze over until they can talk about themselves again. I've known a bunch of people in the program and I feel like they're all like that. Just like me, 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 me. And it's, it's, I, I don't know. I just, I, I wonder if there's something to, um, consider that because you are sitting in a circle waiting for like your chance yeah. in the limelight where it's like really dramatic and deep. And Look at me. I'm an alcoholic. It's God. been, oh, I'm sorry. We shouldn't make no, fun of alcoholics. No, I'm but not. But I will I'm say not, that one time. We're not. We're not. I know. Oh, I kind of am. And I'm, I'm This is a sorry. comedy podcast okay. for God's sakes. But yeah. I, but Deal with it, Alkies. But I will <laughs> you say, blew it. I will say that another thing that kind of, this is mean, this is on the meaner side, yeah. but when, when, you know, the people in AA are just like, Congrats on my one year sober. I'm so, and I kind of want to be like, yeah, good job on that. Yeah. Bad job on ruining your life to beer. <laughs> like, Kat, bad job. You're a horrible person. I have nothing to do with you. I don't uh, endorse that. <laughs> But I will say that one time, I and then we'll move and on to drinking, the actual show. I we're know. drinking straight, like whiskey. At we must look like in the horrible heinous, but this yeah. is like, I know. You know. And this yeah. is yummy. By the way, Alkies, I got to tell you, ooh, you are missing out. But this we tastes should, good. But we should check our privilege that we are able to, like. I know, yeah, I okay. know, whatever. Everybody's checking their privilege these days. Um, <laughs> a quick story, and then I'm done <laughs> with the alcoholism uh, until I get really involved in alcoholism, which is probably six months away. Um, so I took Why? a car to, cause I like to drink. You're predicting yeah, alcohol? Yeah, absolutely. Well, what's gonna drive you to it? Absolutely, you, you in this <laughs> podcast. And so, I mean, you do have me drinking at three in the afternoon once a week. So- um, Thimbles, thimbles. Several symbols. Uh, so anyway, a, a, a quick story. So I took a car to this, this street mechanic guy one time 
and he was working on the engine. All of a sudden, he started wailing on the engine with a wrench, and he just turns to me and he goes, "You gotta bring me to a tra- to an AA meeting right now." And I was like, "Okay, are we gonna work on my car anymore?" No, and I had to drive this guy to an AA. Like he had to go right then and there. So it is. It's a serious thing. Okay, on to less serious, yeah. less serious things. Cats, uh, 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 going to. What, what, do you want to jump right into dream analysis, which was my assignment for the week? Yeah. So okay. Last week. And when I say less serious, I mean she has zero qualifications to do dream analysis <laughs> whatsoever. So let's let's let her so analyze he just, my dreams so and tell just, me how much I hate my mother. So what he just <laughs> said was, I'm not qualified. Yeah. To ask him questions about his life. Yeah. Exactly. In friendship. Right. For like the concern. <laughs> yes. And like betterment. Of mankind. Okay, so my assignment for the week, if we could, let's give him the exact assignment okay. for the week, but was to take the crystal that Kat gave me. Just God pro- bless her. progress, hey, no, no. progress report. First week, I assigned you to talking to liquids. The only evidence I, I got was pretty sarcastic. You talking to liquids. So I'm just gonna like trust that you did it sincerely. I did the dream. I wrote down my dreams which i have a trouble remembering even having dreams because of a very intense marijuana uh, right. thing that i do totally common and totally so common. but i but it so you wanted me to talk to a crystal we'll put it in the sun to reset it for its yeah. new job yeah. then talk to it and ask it to help me remember my <laughs> dreams and then put it under my pillow and then when i wake up record my dreams which i did all of that and uh at the end of the week i'm quite convinced that it was the equivalent of like telling like an overweight person like just chant chimmy chimmy chonga 50 times then do uh 40 sit-ups a day and uh like a month later you're like hey i lost weight and you're like oh my god it, the chanting worked no the just t- telling me to write down my dreams would have been the exact same as all this crystal crap but i did the crystal crap what i'm getting is sun, is yeah. your you're surprised you were able to remember your dreams? No, I'm not. I, anyone, just tell us. Are you happy you that you remembered them? I'm never happy about anything. <laughs> <laughs> so. Touche. Yeah. Touche. So guess what, dude that wants me to join a jet cover band? I'm already miserable. Um, <laughs> joke's on you. <laughs> joke's on you. I'm suicidal. <laughs> you pushed me over the edge. That'll show you. Yeah. Um. So... <laughs> Are you okay? Ma- sorry, yes. happy is the wrong word. Yeah. Um, are has it been enriching your life at all? The dream. Mm, well, we'll find out. Okay. We'll find out. Well, I didn't. I didn't make much of the dreams, to tell you the truth, because I actually good, have my ahead. own opinions of dreams, and I I did a little research as well, and then we'll get into your assignment for the week. Well, so tell me about your dreams. Okay. I, do you want to know about I, the first thing I wrote down when you gave me the assignment was something that I've known for a long time. One of the few dreams I've, I remember was in eighth grade, my first ever sex dream. Do you want to hear about that first or you just want to hear my love dreams to. from the weeks? No, I'd love to. Okay. Uh, first, first dream sex, you remember? Yeah. yeah not, not that I remember. My first sex dream oh, okay. that I remember. Yeah. Uh, I was in eighth grade. I remember that. And I dreamt I was making love to a girl in my class. And she turned into a Care Bear during. This is real. This really happened this in the dream. Is so and cute. she turned into a Care Bear, <laughs> and I literally was like, "Well, I've never had sex before. This is now clearly a Care Bear." But you know what? Fuck it. And I just kept going, and I finished up with a Care Bear. So that was my first ever sex dream. Do you want to wow. analyze that? Wow. No, there's. Which, by the way, is uh, analogous to every time I've started making love to a girl and uh, sobered up halfway through and gone, eh. Just keep going. Mm-hmm. Can, can all I ask questions. a question? Yeah, uh, go. When, when a Care, Care Bear orgasms, does it orgasm out of that thing in the middle of its tummy? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Does it like shoot like a rainbow? A rainbow. You know, you know? What? Yeah. if I'm being honest, in the dream that did not happen. And the Care Bear in my dream had a very human looking vagina. So, I mean, it wasn't a literal <laughs> Care Bear. Uh, <laughs> I'm being super honest no, right now. No, that's great. I'm being that's super great. Honest I appreciate right now. the yeah. honesty. I do, and I think that's kind of a darling dream. Really? Actually, yeah, I a love Care it. Care Bear with a human vagina. Well, I want <laughs> everyone to visualize <laughs> that. Everyone visualize because, that. Because okay, very first of all, lippy, very children, meaty lips. children are oh, sexual. Children do worst. have sexuality, but we're just like yeah. we just pretend like that they don't. Yeah. Because you you know uh, obviously there there are barriers and and so forth, but like children. They're, they're, they are innately sexual and they have erotic dreams and so forth. It's just, you know, but it's interesting that you had a dream in the eighth grade, which is puberty. So you're mm. a boy becoming a man. Yeah. And that was so like half a man, but then half like 
still a little boy dreaming about yeah. Care Bears yeah. and like childish, you yeah. know, yeah. sweet little cartoons. Care Bears, the Care Bears were nice. I think that's a nice dream because they were so loving. Yeah. They're such a, it, yeah. I wonder if there were any like Christian messages we missed in that cartoon because they were all like, they were all about love. Like yeah. with our love combined, we well, can change not the modern, world. Well, uh, not evangelical Christian. Otherwise they would have been all messages of hate and yeah, bigotry. Sure. Good point. Uh, <laughs> maybe some Christians that Let's existed somewhere else in some other time. Why do we well, just bring up the worst part? of Christianity. Let's do that. Let's do that. Well, we could have a whole episode about that. Mm. That'll well, be the okay. that'll be the special so 3 hour long episode and we'll have to do a lot of editing so to get it down to 3, I can assure you. I want to say because I feel like with the dream thing, I feel like you know, all four people that actually listen, I mean, we did get kind of a lot of hits for our first no one liked me um everyone liked cat but also i don't believe that everybody listened to like 40 minutes of us because like e yeah because even yeah. my boyfriend was just like yo i'll get to it later so it's just like you know my friends are right, commenting you know, don't disparage the podcast okay i'm not no i'm not I'm, but I, <laughs> the only reason i say no we're hilarious yeah, where i'm clearly. so confident in us but yeah i i think that um with the subject of dream analysis a lot of people are just enraged by enraged. another person having the audacity to tell them like about their dream last night like so many people get so oh, upset. I revile it I hate it and I I'm the it. exact opposite it. no and you because you're I'm the, the queen dream opposite. teller I can't tell you how many but times I wake up to a text from cat that says oh my god I had a dream last night where my cat was you but you were speaking through my cat's I mouth never and it was that. your you do you never said weird that weird things like that but never that I don't remember that there, one you have listen I've got a rule when yeah. I have a dream about a person I text them yeah. my dream about that. Okay, and that's a bad rule. No, it's not. Well, it's cool. And do you know how much you can find out about your friends? You can like rifle around their psyche. I just gr I just went into my texts as I was on my way here. I was gonna, I'm going to grab just the most recent cat I had a dream text. Oh. Uh, and now this is, no. Uh, this oh. is going to smart. This will smart. This one's going to smart. Yeah. This was maybe, I don't know, a week ago maybe. Yeah, I get enough of these. But this, I just was like, I'll just grab the most recent one. Cat's dream is the, uh, I had a dream last night. I tweeted something that Patton Oswalt retweeted it and it was really funny and I went and it went viral and you were proud of me and when I woke <laughs> up I knew what the tweet was but I didn't write it down exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point exclamation <laughs> point so all right that's oh not too bad God. you had a hot tweet Patton retweeted it I was proud of her which <laughs> obviously <laughs> let's analyze that for a second <laughs> Do you not think that I'm proud of you, Kat? Do you think I'm proud of you? <laughs> You're like, oh my God, Mike Frank was proud of me. <laughs> it was a dream. I'm sweating for that. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm about to tell you all my dreams, <laughs> and I told you I fucked a Care Bear with a human vagina. So come on, <laughs> get okay. on board. Well, speaking of speaking of that tweet, I do have to say that my most popular tweet, oh, brag coincidentally, time. is about a dream, and I uh, it's memorized because I'm so proud of it. But here it is. Oh, really? Hearing about another person's dream bores you? So the brain's mysterious latent content during the REM cycle is not interesting to you. Cool. When is The Bachelor on? Because it's mm -hmm. like, you're not interested in what your friend is yeah. going through in his dream yeah, life? No, Fuck not you. At all. We all have dreams A and B. It's only mysterious to you because you've never bothered okay. to do research go on ahead. real go dream Go ahead. Go ahead. So, well, while, while we're on it, tell me your dream. Go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, can I, I wrote down a few things about dreams uh, throughout the week that before we get to the first dream that are just interesting. Two famous things that came to people in dreams. Uh, first one, less interesting to me, but the periodic table of elements came to the gentleman, Dimitri something or other. I could have looked it up, but didn't bother. Uh, that came to him in a dream. Uh, and so I know really? you. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. And the second one, just real quick, uh, Paul McCartney dreamt uh, the song yesterday, woke up and f <gasps> and plucked it out on the piano and was actually convinced it was uh, someone else's song that he had ripped it off. And he sent uh, the people at Capitol Records uh, going through all their archives looking to see, is this a song? And they couldn't find it. Finally, they came back. They're like, no, dude, it's yours. You wrote it. So yeah, yesterday came to him in a dream. Wouldn't that be remarkable? Like, no, no, yeah. it's my, it, it can't be mine. It's and too by good. The way, it can't be mine. Five years from now, when everyone's jerking off to Care Bear porn, came to me in a dream. Very good. I came up with that. <laughs> That's mine. 
Maybe I invented Furbies. We should type it in. Care Bear porn. We'll yeah. See. No kidding. Um, I'm sure there's Furbies out there fucking Care Bears. And I was the first. Am I? Okay. I'm not so gonna I'm, 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 I'm perplexed. Your whole angle is you're going to like shit on dream analysis. No, no, but I'm you're not. telling no, me no, like the no, most beautiful things have about appeared to people. You want to ana- analyze my dreams. And this is an actual uh, discipline that you are do not have. So this will be an amateur dream analysis. And I'm looking forward to it. But, but I, I just, you know, I, I analyze my own dreams. Yeah. Okay. So how is that not a discipline? That how's that because a discipline? Because people I go to school have. for it and they study it and they study the brain waves and they put people into sleep tests and you've done none of that. You just sit around in your armchair and go, Oh my god. I'm sorry. You remembering and writing down your dreams is still a discipline. Okay. You're right. I apologize. You're the welcome. haters mm-hmm. are already at their keyboards, I assure you. Go ahead. And then I wrote down just a question I have. A question I have that you might or might not have the answer to and Travis you feel free to why is it we can't tell we're dreaming when we're dreaming why is it you wake up and go oh god thank you it was just a good dream when in reality when you look back of course that dream where you were you know so you don't lucid dream sitting in a armchair on the ocean you know I've had lucid talking dreams. to a porpoise why was it not I'm no you're not missing you're missing my point why was it not obvious to me in the moment that was a dream? Well, Why is it I have to wake up and go, oh, God, it was just a dream? Why is it that when you're having a dream, it's not obvious? This insane reality is just a dream. Why is it that we have to wake up and go, oh, in comparison to the reality I'm in now, I can see that was a dream. You're revealing the moment, so much. I, it's not even funny. Wait, you think this is unusual? Everybody wakes up and goes, oh, God, thank God it was just a dream. Do you not lucid dream ever? No, I've. I, think I lucid once. dream all okay. the time and that's because of the discipline where I full on know that I am dreaming and I'm like, cool, I'm dreaming. So I'm going to do what I want and I'm going to fly over the ocean. Well, I think that's too bad in reality because sometimes dreams serve a very important purpose and you're s- you're going around that purpose by lucid dreaming. Your brain is working stuff out. We'll get to that. You got to pick a side, bro. Like it's either Im- it's either pertinent or it's not. Right. W- whatever. What's it going to be? Moving on. Well, moving on. That's my question to you and everyone. I Why is it? And I did have a dream recently. And this Perry is totally and true. Repost. No, I don't really think so. Uh, so we, I had a dream recently. And this is totally true. Where I dreamt that I witnessed a, an, a, a nuclear detonation. I saw the mushroom cloud on the horizon. And I thought to myself, this is Jesus. it. This is it. And I woke up. And th- this is true. Just This is not going to take any analysis whatsoever. I woke up and I literally went. Eh, I was cool either way. Just a dream, but you know what? If I was about to die in a nuclear blast, eh, that's fine too. That's Whatever. That's I guess I'll go to a podcast with Cat. That's I pretty thought important. I was die. Yeah. They actually say in in dream analysis that you know the most uh, who are the people with dream catchers or real people that do dream analysis. Uh, it, it, this is this is a Jungian. Booze, this please. this this comes from a Jungian analyst, yeah. um, Carl Jung. Uh, oh, it's Carl not. Young. It's not Does he about. Spell it with a J. Jung. Um, lots How of, educated I am. Lots of navel gazing. Um, there's. Thank you. It doesn't matter what crisis scenario is happening in your dream. What matters is how you feel about it. So I think that's pretty remarkable that you witnessed a nuclear holocaust and you were serene. Yeah, that's Says serene. a lot about you. I was melancholy. Melancholy. All right, dream one. You ready? Yep. Yeah. How do you want to do it? One, one dream at a time? Just you want me to read them all of them? We'll just tell you right off the bat. Do you want to go one at a time? Oh, or? can you... I got five. Can, what, can five you can um, and the, describe the them to me and then... No, can I, can I, only, I, I can't remember them. I can only tell you what it says. But then can here. I ask you questions? Uh, you can that. ask me questions, okay, but chances ahead. of me remembering... That's like fine. Even like looking at this today, I was like, I don't remember you much can do about it. that dream, but... This will be fun. Okay. I was cast on a show. It was late and everyone wanted to go home. And and they asked me a question to which I felt I had a very long and insightful answer, but felt pressure to just play dumb and give a short answer. And then I woke up. Well, that's really, that's cool. Um, Has there been a scenario like that that you remember in your recent past? No, in fact, you know me. I'll jump at the answer to give a pedantic. But can you think? Okay, then, 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 then cast answer. a wider net. When tell me about a time that I've never been cast on any show other than the play in eighth grade, which I got kicked out of for uh, failing some class. And which uh, one? Yeah. 
Wh- what which class? Play? Oh, uh, it was physics, which was an advanced Ooh. class for an eighth grader anyway. You just and wanted then, to. Yeah. You wanted to. It was sneak. bullshit. It was stupid. I don't want to get into it, but okay. we're talking about a kid who never took scholastics int- uh, seriously at all. And then they, somebody was like, you should try the drama club. So I did. I tried out and I got the lead in the play. And then they were like, oh, you failed a class, which I always failed classes. Like you're out of the play. It's like, no, 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 no. How about just letting me pursue this? The first thing right. I've ever been interested oh, in God. scholastically, but fuck you, vice no principal. One had you know any who you are. Like, hell of an educator. Let's American get a, education. Let's system, get them excited about hell. something for once and then take it away. God, they had yeah. we are in the dark ages of education. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to move on to the next one? No, 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 hang on. I, I want to find out when there. No, no. Has there ever been a time in your life where you have been pressured to give an insightful answer and you come up short? That you can remember? No, I give insightful answers to everything. Smartest guy you'll ever meet. Well, <laughs> this is... Cl- okay, you're right. There's nothing there. If you if you can't remember a time that you what, didn't... That I thought I should just play... No, I felt pressure by people. I was like, oh, I have a good answer to that. But everyone's like, dude, it's time to go. Like, this show is over or whatever. So can we just wrap it up? Just say, duh, I don't know. When, well, when in reality, I wanted to say, well, the history of that particular subject is long and... Uh, well, when in, like, your, when in your life have people been like, wrap it up? We're not listening. Uh, during up. sex a number of times. All right. <laughs> That's true, by the way. We could get into that some other day. Can't but wait. It definitely happened. But, but 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 she also told me she's never had an orgasm before in her life. Later in the relationship, and we totally broke up. normal. Yeah. yeah, I know. But right. she did on one occasion say, "Yeah, can you wrap it up there?" Um. Okay. F- Sally Forth. Let's Sally Forth. No, her name wasn't Sally Forth. No, it, I mean. Uh. Yeah. I actually know what you meant. Oh. Okay. You should just learn to play along with the joke. Well. Okay. I did realize this that's one, like a very yeah. old expression. Okay. Yeah. Well, and a comic strip. Do you remember it? No. No. Uh, no. Okay. So this next one is just a literal dream. Uh, I played at the uh, Hayworth Dynasty Typewriter Theater with my uh, friend and uh, bandmate Dino uh, the other night. And uh, I woke up to a dream, and this is what I wrote down. I was performing at the Hayworth with Dino. Dino was there. I was accusing someone. Uh, either in the show or in the audience of being a po- an imposter and having bad intentions. You were accusing someone in the show? Like, Well, it was a show we were on and there were other acts. So I can't remember if it was somebody backstage or somebody in the audience, but I was angry at them. I was back at the Hayworth. Who in your life do you feel is an imposter with bad intentions? You don't have to say it out loud, but is there someone? An imposter. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Oh my God! No, I'm saying uh, that hitchhiker. That hitchhiker I know. <laughs> you know that hitchhiker. <laughs> That's stupid. There. That's a funny gag. I like okay, that. Yeah. That hitchhiker. I like it. Yeah. Um, no. No. I, I don't think anyone's. In. Well, actually, I do think someone's an imposter, and I'm not going to say who. But yeah. our, our hippiest, dippiest, dipshittiest friend, who's constantly whatever. We're not going there. Well, I just wanted to say that, um, I d- and I don't. It, it's a. Uh, Wow, there, that that just I, that got so loaded for me just now that I'm speechless for really? the first time in my wow. life. I'm speechless. We did it, folks. <laughs> okay. Um, wow, I think she's not speechless. I think she's afraid that if she <coughs> says what I have, so she's really much to thinking say, but, that but, she okay, will. Okay, I want you, you to cannot, think. You I cannot. Want, you cannot but, take me okay, down a no, notch. But, but, I mean, I'm, and I only say that because I'm down to the last notch. There's but, no notches to go down. But so that's say just it. If you that illustrates me, the difference in our fundamentals. What I'm doing is not about taking you down notches. It's about elevating you. Get it? No. No. All right. Okay. So, but hang on. I'm talking about an imposter with bad intentions. This is what I wrote down. Is there, do, Again, is there someone really in your life the that you think has bad intentions? An imposter? Because just think about it. Who is? Who does that represent? That's it. Moving on. Go. Okay. On. Yeah. I'll yeah. give that some thought. Now, you know what? I'm going to give you uh, points on that one. That might be insightful. That might be insightful. Oh, it might I'm going to think about it. Well, I mean, you're not <laughs> qualified to do this, you d- but whatever. I'm just poking her. I'm just planting seeds. Yeah. Just poking around. Yeah, so was Hitler. Um, <laughs> that means nothing. That means nothing. That means nothing. Uh, this one's interesting. I you was watching. Love Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm, look at me. I look at you. Don't get a gray beard overnight. Dudes my age <laughs> love World War II. That's funny. You know what I'm saying? I often say that uh, I wish I was gay or straight. What my problem is, I have a crush on World War II. That's cute. So yeah. Um, Why don't you date World War II? I, I would if I could. <laughs> uh, okay, next one. I was watching a panel discussion with Christopher Hitchens, David Crosby, and Bette Midler. 
Christopher Hitchens was speaking. He was, he was using big words and talking about a woman's breasts and how they sat in, a dre in the dress she was wearing. And then he began speaking in French. He was like saying, he's like saying, her, her breasts were like, oh, je ne sais pas, or whatever. And then the moderator said, uh, interrupted Hitchens to say, you know, no one likes you, right? Then David Crosby started to speak and I woke up. Hmm. What do you make of that? Um, are you a breast man? Uh, no. Well, I mean, aren't we all? I don't know. Uh, but no, yeah, no, no, definitely not. And then, um, yes. uh, Travis going with the yes. Yes, everybody. I like so the A's, A or B cup. As an older man. Yeah. As a woman with a double D, mm -hmm. it hurts my feelings. I'm sorry. Because a lot of men say that. A lot of men say any more than a handful is too much. And I gotta say, that just sounds like sour grapes. Okay. What do you mean no one do you get? It actually it? sounds like <laughs> like you know that just sounds to me like a, a guy with a girlfriend who like has no tits. Congrats. Um yeah. but, but they are, no men are not like small small breasted women don't understand that men don't care about large breasts at all. Like at, it does not take us up any notches whatsoever. But what do you mean you know no one likes you? That's fascinating. That's what he said to Hitchens, which is upsetting because I absolutely adore Christopher Hitchens. Right, but like Great. do you do you feel that anyone has well, said that maybe. to you? Like do you do you well, feel like maybe. you get that message from someone? You know no one likes you, right? Uh, if somebody well, would say that to you, who would it be? Uh, the guy that wants me to fuck right off into a jet cover band in the Midwest matter. somewhere. The guy um, that said Michael, who's the lamest. Think about somebody saying that to you, but then yeah. also you think about who would you say that to? Who in your life do you want that message to hit right to the heart? You know no one likes you, right? Fucking brutal. Yeah. Is yeah. there anyone that you want to? Uh, not that I would discuss on the broadcast. Right, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Okay, we got two more to go. Dream four. Uh, oh, boy. Get ready for some analysis mm -hmm. on this one, mm -hmm. Super Producer Travis Clyburn. Uh, I was with my parents, but they weren't my parents. It was as, as if they were being played by younger people. I was a teenager. I was in a lot of trouble for something, but my parents had to go out. And in the meantime, I ate a tortilla. Uh, <laughs> oh, my, just raw, yeah, not like fried or... I think fried. Just um, and then my father came home, uh, and he was still not my dad. He was played by a, a much younger person. And, and I was still in a lot of trouble, but I was also angry about bad parenting. And I remember saying, quote, sorry kid, here's some bullshit rule you didn't know about. Uh, oh, here, here's some bullshit rule you didn't know you're broken. Or what, here's some bull, I, the, the, I typed it and it autocorrected wrong, so I don't know what it exactly says, but sorry kid, here's some bullshit rule you didn't know about. Now you're in trouble, don't you know? Interesting. That's what I said. I was like angry, I was like, oh yeah. Sorry, kid. Here's some bullshit rule you didn't know about. Now you're in trouble, don't you know? Delivered kind of like that. And then I woke up. So but you were in in the dream. First of all, you seeing your parents as younger people, uh, mm -hmm. clearly, I mean, you're identifying with your parents as the age you are now. Like as, as No, they were younger than me. They were yeah. like 20-something. Well, yeah, you were for, yeah, for yeah. sure. But like you're identifying the age I look them. look now. You're identifying with them <laughs> as like equals, yeah. Instead of yeah, you know. And then, um, sorry, kid, don't you know that? Here's some bullshit rule you didn't know about. Now you're in trouble, don't you know? That is fascinating. Yeah. Like it, I don't know what rule I broke or what I, think I it's did. It's interesting that they're younger. I mean, yeah. that would denote the fact that you think that uh, the rules were arbitrary and immature. Or yeah. the way that they raised you and stuff like that. Oh my God. See? If you want to have an episode about the way I was, my, the, the, ooh, yeah. See, we're all qualified. This is so interesting. This is why I wish at we're parties, not I wish at parties it was socially this. acceptable to everyone talk about their dreams. It's so yeah. cool. You can find out so much and you, and you get to talk about the real meat of life. No, you think you life. would know something about them. Anyway. I would yeah. so much rather talk I about I like to like say that my mother had three philosophies for raising me. She First, she tried yelling at me, then she tried screaming at me. <laughs> then she tried <laughs> shrieking at me and then she was completely out of ideas. She was like, well, that was I tried yelling, screaming, yelling, shrieking, shrieking, shrieking. And then she was like, what else is there? Uh, loving? I'm going to, I'm going to, mom, I'm going to quote Jerry no, Seinfeld. This. this is like, I couldn't write a joke this good in like 20 years. And it's yeah. kind of misogynist, but it's very funny. Yeah. Uh, why do, 
Why is it that moms never have headaches? They always have splitting headaches. Well, it wouldn't be from screaming all day, would yeah. it? Oh. Which is brilliant. That is good. But all right, final dream. All right, all right. Uh, and this is no dream. I just woke up with these words in my head, and this was this morning, so... Uh, maybe I'm still in this frame of mind, and the words in my head were, only honesty will debunk a lie. Another lie will bunk it forever, whatever that means. Okay, only honesty uh, will debunk a lie. Sure. Another lie will bunk it forever. Is Dude, bunking that's even a thing? Smart. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. When you think of the word bunk, what do you guys think about? Because I think about You're drugs, full of bunk. drugs that don't work. Like, oh. dude, my, these rolls are totally bunk, dude. Like, dude, rolls? these rolls are What the are hell were you doing? What I, drugs were you doing? No, I mean, I like, I just heard like, someone we, we say this. We sprinkled something on our sushi. Oh, man, <laughs> these rolls are bunk. Oh, I was thinking like rolls, like um, rolls. tabs of ecstasy. Like it used to be called oh. a roll. Oh, really? Yeah. Like these rolls are bunk. Dude. I, it's a joke. It's mm. stupid. But that's what I. Okay. So a but another lie will bunk it forever. Another lie will bunk I, it forever. I actually think that's very timely. And I think that that is an extra special glimpse into like how personally you are taking the current events of the world. Oh, you know, I take them personally. Yeah. Yeah. I like to yeah. say we that both I do, would, but if I were to die, even whenever I die, this will probably be true. But if I were to die right now, I always say that, like, I want a scientist to look at my DNA under a microscope because I'm convinced they're going to go, holy shit, this guy hated Trump down to his genes, down to his, it's in his <laughs> DNA. It spells yeah. out fuck Trump. That's how I feel. You should have seen me election night 2016 crazy person running I, down the street you fucking conservatives you like drinking liberal tears how's this for liberal tears running down the street as he was speaking accepting that he had won the presidency with my hands over my ears just going i will not listen to this man i will not listen to this man i did i didn't even know where Michael, i was I, I got like two blocks down the street until i was like wait whoa, what the fuck I, hey, where I am up, i i woke yeah. up like there had been a horrible death yeah. In my, like and and I was starting a new job as a receptionist as an exercise studio yeah. that day. Yeah. And because I couldn't stop crying, yeah. totally contributed to me getting fired. Yeah. From that job. And also, I will say, so last night was Halloween, and yeah. uh, for my costume, I needed a lanyard. Yeah. And I don't know what that is. You know, it's it's for it's it's a it's a necklace with credentials, like your badge. Oh oh. You know oh, what a lanyard oh, oh, is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I you know have a couple, but my boyfriend had quite a few, so I just grabbed the first one that I saw from him and it was a it was a vip for a trump pence rally oh my god and i started like fiddling with it to make it work with my costume and then just all of a sudden i couldn't touch it anymore yeah. and i just cut the whole thing up and then i just grabbed a, a lanyard that i had that i didn't want to ruin because it was from a comedy festival like the first right. comedy festival i was like nope i'm gonna use that because i energetically could not touched the lanyard and I couldn't have it on my person. Yeah. But I know and that got me thinking that I know that you and I are both like deeply, deeply affected by what's going on in the world, but on mm -hmm. very different levels. And your level is definitely like more analytical mm -hmm. and and mine is more just like I, I kind of want to think about I don't want to think about it. I'll yeah. dip my toe in. I kind of know what's going on. I have to yeah. know what's going on. I don't want to know what's going on. It's gonna right. hurt me. I like know. I've got to like preserve some self care. You know, so that's, is this a good time to bring up and another thing? No, no. we're not going to do the end. You, she wanted it, me to talk about I wanted a, I wanted Brazil, a segment, but, but I want a segment. She was found it interesting when I was chatting with the, the gentleman at the table next to us at the cafe yesterday, but I decided that that's not going to fit in the show to talk, uh, you know, Brazilian suppose, politics. Because I will just agree with you, and show. it's more interesting when we yell at each other. Yeah. Anyways, right. dreams are important. Yes. They have a history. Yeah. There's, yeah. Um, there's scores and scores of evidence that, and now analyzing them yeah, helps your life. Yeah, I agree. Your but you life. haven't touched on any of the, the true science, which I looked into a little bit. Yeah, me too. A little bit. Oh, Brother. you did? Okay. Yeah, I well, printed out four yeah. pages of, okay. of uh, well, well, you can just summarize you're gonna talk. Them. You're going to talk about Hall? Hmm? You're going to talk about Hall? Hmm? You're going to talk about Nielsen? Hmm? Nielsen. What about yeah, the 40-year no, no. study? Hmm? Go ahead. No. Okay, why, why don't you just talk about it, and I'll see if I can jump in, since you seem ready to go, but I prefer you not read off a page. Okay, well, I'll just Say, just sort of I'll just say there was learned. a 40 year study with all this um, collected uh, dream reports from, uh, you know, 50,000 people. It's a 40 year study. 40 year study is, you know, nothing to see that. And I just, I thought it was fascinating that um, 
the reoccurring themes are so similar and um, the most common emotion experienced was anxiety. Americans have more aggression reported in their dreams than any other industrialized nation. Mm -hmm. Of course, men have more uh, aggressive emotions reported in their dreams than women. Um, and then, of course, you know, the, the things that, that people think about uh, all the time, like um, the test thing, like coming to school and there's a test and you haven't studied yeah. all year, um, uh, sexual uh, dreams of a sexual nature, um, uh, being uh, okay. flying, um, ar arriving late You're somewhere. You're just listing dreams. So no, but let's th these move are on. but these are but these are the things that like isn't that fascinating that it these is fascinating. that these um this criteria is like what's reported most in dreams like being late. Right. You know, All like right. Well, which which gets us to our next point. Okay, you were insanely okay. late today, and uh, the comedy club that we do this at is getting ready to open, so we have to move on. So okay. Super producer Travis Clyburn is giving so us. I'm so sorry. Um, it was. It, I I, know. I went over cold water. I wouldn't have done. It was. I was late That's for a, a reason. In Los Angeles. How much time do we have, Super producer Travis Skyboy? A minute. a minute. We got to wrap it up. Okay, we don't even have time to do my bullshit scope. My bullshit scope this week is going to have to not happen. Do you have any last words in the thirty seconds? Here, we have I'll left just in I'll just episode? intuit your um, instead of pulling out my phone and going to free roll astrology. I had Rob her Resney. watch, by the way, uh, two things about astrology. It did nothing but fortify my beliefs. Of course, it did of nothing course, before. I'm like course. Carl yes. Sagan yeah. was not as smart as I was. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And yeah, <laughs> the other one was Richard Dawkins. Okay. Yeah. Give me just my horoscope for the week and we'll see what we got okay um so uh it, it's not like a prediction it's more some advice um uh move forward in the week like a cat about to pounce on a negative thought so like cats don't pounce on negative but thoughts. right but but like but like <laughs> if they like like a cat were to pounce on a mat on a yeah, mouse yeah I want you to observe every single thought as if it were the mouse and you're the cat and just get it before it materializes. Just be like, oh, that's negative. I'm gonna go to my gonna go to my place. Gonna go to my place of whatever makes you happy. Does anything make you happy? What is it? Uh booze. No, nah, come on. One more. Oh, come on. I'm what makes you happy? Uh, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, think happy thoughts. One happy thought. What makes me happy? I like documentaries um, <laughs> about, miserable like, things. Uh, about miserable things. <laughs> and I love doing stand up comedy more than words. Okay, well and I love playing guitar. So but like I can only do that when I'm super, super stoned. I tried playing straight yesterday without being stoned. And it was kind of boring. OK, so Aries for the week yeah. um, when you are when you he see your thoughts, observe them. And when they're going to something that's negative and doesn't make you feel good, imagine just like crushing, you know, at like a, a club. You know, where like your hero is like side stage watching you. That would make me really nervous. Maybe you'll give me my assignment off camera for the week. That one okay. sounds a little tough to really have fun with next week. So we'll talk more about it. Cat right. was ridiculously late I'm sorry. Uh, to today's podcast. I said I was sorry. I said I, I like accept, accept apologies apology. go a long way yeah, with me. No. Like yeah. when people well, apologize yeah. to I me, accept your yeah. apology too. I don't think yeah. yeah. By the way, right. apology. You're the one apologizing. You don't get to say I'm sorry <laughs> and then go apologies go a long way with me. Well, great. <laughs> it's your apology. It's, how does it go with me? I just I want to feel forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. And you're we uh, off the ball wrong, yeah. signing off for another week. This is incompatible with Cat and Michael. We got super producer Cl Travis Clyburn on the ones and the twos. Yeah. Michael Rogelio, Cat Augustin. We wish you all the very best. More hate, more hate. Leave comments about what a jerk off I am. I love it. I love it. I love it. If you could give me a compliment, though, it would really help me. Yeah, out. she likes Thank compliments. You. I like hate. Okay, <laughs> see you next week. Bye. <laughs>